Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, I want to show you something about camera animation today and uh, a little bit of a depth of field. Uh, and uh, I want to just use any kind of object. So if you're fine with following this tutorial, just follow this uh, along with any kind of geometry, just a, a sphere or whatever um, and uh, and probably a light for depth of field rendering with Arnold but um, uh, I want to show you something which I found very nice and uh, inviting and this is this company here based in the Netherlands I guess they called cgmoa.com and they offer these inviting things like the, the croissants uh, the pumpkins uh, and the cut open watermelon etc all in 3d of course and uh, I asked them could I use one of the uh, your models here which are priced between 19 and something um, this one is free for example uh, and they said yeah you can use the free shell this uh, there's a model of a shell here basically I thought that's great and then the whole process took so long and finally before checking out I got stuck with this white more or less white window so I skipped the whole thing and went to TurboSquid where I'm a registered user and uh, to, it's very easy to actually get whatever you like here for free or pay something and I got the, uh, the boots and uh, what you can see here the boots have a very nice texture and they're not very shiny just a little bit shiny and I did not use that shininess here so uh, my boots these boots basically are totally shiny I just wanted to tell you that I'm aware of that I just didn't want to invest time here now I'm going to show you what we'll do today this is the animation of a camera around that very shiny boot this is a camera animation around that shiny boot what's the difference well and this is a depth of field experiment I like that very shallow depth of field and you can make it less uh, impressive and more subtle this looks almost very realistic it's depth of field in there so here is the shoe in my Maya scene and I've selected the camera I created a camera which I just it's called by default perspective one that's this camera we're looking through that camera and I set two keyframes you see the uh, red stroke down there and down here so uh, 120 frames the first frame is this keyframe and the last one is this one so it makes totally sense I just want to go around that boot and when you set these camera keyframes you get that problematic camera motion let's run the motion so here there's nothing to be seen because the cam camera does not know where the boot is uh, it, it's not interested in the boot it's interested in interpolating uh, a nice path and f um, now let's have a look into well for example the top view here let's select the camera again it's sitting here you see this is the problem the camera wants to move over here and it finally will land there you see but um, it gets the boot right out of focus it's uh, not in in the viewport anymore but at the end of course it is because it needs to land on that key frame this is a very critical and typical problem when you animate cameras two keyframes and you don't get what you want and the solution is not in most cases it's not creating a keyframe in the middle and I show you why that's not the case so let us position the camera a little bit further away I'm in the middle now and by the way I have a keyframe set already because I have auto key on if you don't have that switched on just press S once you're ready but I'm not ready yet because I want to rotate the camera so it looks at the boot and you see it's already tilted because I use this window here rather than this window for example now I have a keyframe here and you see the animation is much better but it makes that sudden rotation so it's basically unusable and you cannot really fix this with more adding more keyframes 
let's have a look with the camera selected at the Windows Animation Editors Graph Editor. Just brief meditation, Windows Animation Editors Graph Editor. And it shows us the keyframes, three keyframes for the camera. If we look at the X, Translate X, this is our Translate X. This is how the camera moves in this axis here. This is Y, how it moves up and down. So it uh, starts slowly and it ends slowly because that's our default setting. Now here you might think the translation in Z is a little bit odd because it goes up here and it goes down there. Well, if you, now let me grab the mouse. When you press the key W in order to get the translation uh, and you can move this down. If you move this down, is the animation much better? No, it uh, accelerates here in this area. Let me move this over here just to show you an example how you cannot solve that problem probably using this technique. The standard procedure to fix this problem is very easy and I demonstrated it in several tutorials already. So uh, we go to the camera here and press Control A. This brings us the attribute editor and we have two nodes here. One is the perspective shape which gives us the properties of that camera, for example the focal length and the angle of view and what kind of film back we have uh, what, if uh, we had real film. And this tab here is showing us the uh, keyframes of the actual node, which is not interested in camera um, properties here. It's just about the position, the rotation and scaling. You see, a camera scaling does not make sense and it's not really animated. It has a scale of 1, 1, 1 uh, all over the time. And uh, we can uh, use a command which is quite important and I think I never did something about this in one of my tutorials. You go to edit and you delete all by type. And all by type you delete the static channels, not the channels. If you delete uh, all channels, the all animations will be lost. But the static channels, when I click here, have a look at the scale. It goes away because it's, not, it's a static channel. It doesn't serve that purpose anyway. Now what we'll do is we'll right mouse click on the rotate X and we break the connection and we do the same here, break the connection so we don't have keyframes for the rotation anymore. So what does the animation look like now? Totally useless of course. Um, but we did this because we need to free our rotation parameters for creating a different type of camera. Have a look here. It's called Perspective 1 and that's all there is. Now we go to the camera properties and instead of having a camera, we want a camera and an aim. When I click here, I switch the camera type to a camera with an aim and that means it builds a group here with the aim in that group. Just check it out. Camera and aim. This would produce an error message if you hadn't freed the rotation parameters. Now the perspective one is a group and when I open that group I see my perspective aim and that's sitting here currently. What I do now is I just go to the very beginning and actually go right here and set my camera aim to the center. Maybe a little bit up because I like that boot more or less in the middle and I can keep it there and I do nothing else. Now the animation looks like this. And if you feel that the camera is getting too close here, not a problem at all, just go here and now you select the camera, which has those keyframes here, and go a little bit further away. It has the, the aim sitting in the boot, so we don't have a problem with that. Now let's select the camera again because we're going to play with depth of field. The camera sits quite at a distance from the boot currently and we want to uh, introduce the light. There's a 
what kind of light is there? Spotlight is in the scene. And uh, we go to Renderer and to Arnold, if it's not switched on anyway. And we activate Arnold Rendering. It takes a second until Arnold loads the textures. And here you see that quite amazing depth of field. We actually can deactivate the grid. Where does it come from? Well, uh, you go to the camera, which is here, called Perspective 1, and all the way down you have Arnold, and that's important. It's an Arnold rendering system, and it's not the depth of field which is coming with Maya. You don't want to use that. You want to use Arnold, and in the Arnold section you have Enabled Depth of Field. When I disable that, I get the straightforward rendering here of that very glossy boot. And when I enable it, uh, it has uh, a very strong depth of field effect. I have a focus distance animated. It's under uh, light, uh, underlaid with red. So um, it has keyframes. And uh, that's because the distance of the camera to the boot is always changing. If you want to do that automatically, measure the distance and feed it into that value here, check out another tutorial, which I did quite a while ago, about automatic depth of field. Um, but uh, we're going to go to Windows and, as before, Animation Editor and Graph Editor. And here you see my depth of field keyframes. Uh, when I go to the next keyframe here, uh, it's uh, uh, lowering the, the value because I'm getting closer, closer, closer. Here's the next keyframe, here's the next keyframe, next one. And then the camera distances it, itself uh, just a little bit. That's why uh, the line here goes up. So that's basically what I did. Um, I just played with the with these values. And uh, when you, um, let me say, let me see, let's go to this somewhere in the middle. Um, if I don't like that um, distance from the camera for the depth of field, I can go here and change that value, obviously. What you would typically do is you press and hold the control key, and now in that field, use the middle mouse button to change that value. So I'm not typing in numbers, I'm just changing that value. And I can set that keyframe, obviously, set key. So when I'm here, a little bit later, the focus changes and goes to the very front of that boot. Does that make sense now? The camera gets closer, that's why uh, the front is getting out of focus again. And of course, this is very extreme. And I'll show you how to make this less extreme. And that has to do with the aperture size. Now, we have that shallow view here in the, by the way, renderer Arnold. So we're rendering with Arnold now. And, um, oh, sorry. Um, we go to the aperture size. Uh, it's 0 0.5. The default is 1. So that's extremely shallow now. But how about 0 0.1? Now you have quite a subtle depth of field effect. It's obviously out of focus here and there, but the middle is in focus. And the shadows, of course, play with this same system. Well, this is what, what I wanted to show you. First of all, the camera, two keyframes, and it's always maybe 99% frustrating. You need to create an aim in order to keep that camera focused on your central object. Once you have that and want to render it with depth of field, you need to go to the Arnold section in the camera shape and activate depth of field and then play with the focal distance. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.